Hello and welcome to my channel. I remain your baby's doctor and today we'll be talking about something that is supposed to be eradicated but it's still happening in a lot of places. I know that um, in the United States they have only about 30 cases of tetanus per year but in Africa, in some countries in Africa, we still have a lot of cases of tetanus per year. Talking about both the neonatal tetanus and the generalized tetanus that, uh, that occurs post neonatal period. So tetanus here is still a thing and I think we still need to talk about it and raise awareness about tetanus. Let me tell you the story of this four-year-old boy that was playing with his elder siblings and some neighbors. While playing the game of um, football, which you can almost not separate from a male child, uh, the child got punctured by a rusty nail. Of course, he cried, yelled, and the elder siblings came to help. What they did was they put some sand to rub it and they dropped some oil hot oil actually on the wound and but they told the child that it was going to be fine so after a few days of limping and some uncomfortable things he was fine so he kept on living his normal life as though nothing happened about a week after the child was noticed not to be able to open the mouth so he wasn't able to open the mouth very well and when mother tries to feed he is unable to open the mouth and the mother became worried what is going on what is happening to my child and occasionally when they call his name or they shout or a phone rings beside the child he has this very stiff movement of the body and so they were wondering is it convulsing what is going on what is happening with this child so they decided to seek medical help that is story number one Story number two is that of a seven-year-old child who fell off the bike in a rural environment. When this happened, the parents took the child to a local medicine store where he was given some medications. He had some ointment put on the wound and he was sent home. The child was fine until about five days after when he started um, having symptoms. What happened was that the mother woke up in the morning called on the child and the child refused to answer. So she walked into the child's room and saw the child lying on the bed, unable to respond. So she hit him. Hi, I'm talking to you. Why are you not responding? And then the moment she did that, the child had the spasm. And the moment the child had the spasm, instead of them to take the child to the hospital, they went to seek help at another uh, local health uh, um, herbal practitioner who gave the child a lot of herbal concoctions and of course by the time they got to the hospital the situation was worse than it was in the uh, first few days. Story number three was that of a child that had the uvula cut off. Yeah, there are still a lot of harmful practices that uh, people do in this part of the world and I hope to post a video soon on harmful practices so that we can raise awareness about these practices but today's video is not about that. So when this child had the local um, uvulectomy, that is they removed, they cut off uh, the uvula using a knife. Uh, the child initially developed sore throat, was unable to eat, was drooling saliva and of course they thought okay it's because um, the uvula was cut. So what did they do next? They left the child at home, kept on giving hot stuff, peppery stuff so that it can heal on time. Suddenly the mother called on the child one day and the child responded with a spasm. So what is common to all these stories is what we call is a bacteria that we call Clostridium tetany. And now, don't bother yourself about trying to pronounce that. It's just me fighting in my medical jargon. Okay, so Clostridium tetany is a bacteria that causes tetanus. And that is exactly what we are talking about today. So, tetanus as a disease occurs when a wound, a, usually a dirty wound, is infected by the bacteria Clostridium tetany. So, when this happens, the bacterium grows, proliferates in the wound and releases some toxins that are harmful to um, children. Truth is, this is 
a vaccine preventable disease so it is still very painful when you see patients coming with features of tetanus and you're like we've been preaching this message about receiving vaccines and all that and we still have issues with tetanus even to come down to the neonatal tetanus that's the one that occurs in newborns this one is even more painful because it is now a routine in Nigeria that mothers should receive tetanus toxoid, that is an immunization against tetanus during pregnancy. But a lot of mothers will still skip this and go on to have some harmful habits done to their child or harmful cultural things done to their child when the child is giving birth to and exposes the child to tetanus. So how do we prevent tetanus? Number one is vaccination. Vaccination plays a very important role in prevention of diseases, especially tetanus. So I'll be showing you shortly the recommended timetable for tetanus vaccination. So that if you are not vaccinated, if your child is not vaccinated up to date, kindly follow the guidelines to get your child's um, vaccination. So vaccination plays a very important role in prevention of tetanus. <music> will be uh, for parents. For younger children, you can not really tell them much about tetanus because a lot of them don't even understand what you're talking about. But you as the parent, it is your sole responsibility to make sure that your younger child plays in a safe environment. So please remove all the rusty nails, anything that can cause injury to your child. And remember to always seek help, no matter how small the injury is. And for older children, you can educate them about tetanus, tell them uh, what you know about tetanus and how it can be prevented. So that each time or any time they have an injury, they will, you'll be the first to know and then you'll be able to um, take the appropriate step. Now again to the parents, I would like to encourage us to stay away from harmful traditional practices. Like I said, I will mention some of these practices in a video that I will make later. But please, any traditional practice that would in, uh, uh, include cutting your child, making incisions and all that, please stay away from those practices because this will also help us to reduce the incidence of tetanus all over the world. And we cannot overemphasize the role of seeking medical help on time. So when your child, if in the in a case where the child starts or develops the symptom, that is you missed the whole period of the child having the injury, you could not do anything about it. Now the child has symptoms. The earlier you present to the hospital, the better. Because there are some things that can be done to reduce the severity and in some cases to reverse um, the effect of tetanus toxins on children. So please, we need to improve on our health seeking behaviors. If you notice anything awkward or different about your child, please seek help. And I'm very sure doctors are always ready to respond to your child's needs. Thank you so much for joining us again today. I hope we'll be able to tell someone to tell someone to tell someone about tetanus. And in recent, in um, very soon, we'll be able to say that we have successfully eradicated tetanus from the world. Thank you so much for joining me again. I mean your baby's doctor. Do well to like, share, subscribe, click the notification bell so that each time I post a video, you'll be the first to know. Thank you so much for joining us again today.